The 2024 Jeep Gladiator is here. Here's everything you need to know and why we're a little disappointed. Find out today on Dirt Road Cred. Well guys, the time has finally come. We finally got to see what the 2024 Gladiator looked like. Now, I think Jeep did this time frame on purpose. As you guys know, towards the September time frame, it's rounding out the Q3 and going in towards the holidays, and a lot of big brands do kind of new product reveals around this time. The iPhone 15 was just released, Ford just released their brand new iteration of the F-150. There's a lot of companies that are revealing new products now, so hopefully they can either start taking orders or getting them produced and delivered to people by the end of the holidays, that's really a big goal for them. So I think it made sense that Jeep did this. Plus it's right around the time of Detroit Auto Show. In fact, the Detroit Auto Show fires up this week and they'll have that as well as the full Camp Jeep experience there. We were able to do that last year and we had an absolute fun time. That was awesome. Just having the driver kind of whip us around that course. And I gotta say, if you guys ever have a chance to do that, definitely check it out. It's worth the 20 minutes of waiting in line to really check out what a Jeep can do inside an auto show. Yeah, so let's get into it. We saw the reveal today, it was with Jim Morrison. I'm a huge fan of him and everything that he's done for the Jeep brand. Let's go over what we actually saw on screen because I think everyone was waiting for this really robust, this really grand reveal. And while we got a, a brand new refresh Gladiator, I don't think we got everything that we were anticipating. The first few Jeeps that we got to see today was obviously first the Rubicon, and I'm excited because I saw in the high velocity yellow with high velocity half doors, which you can now factory order. Now the neatest things that they said about some of the specs on there is that they is that they are able to kind of achieve some new highlights for a mid-sized truck. The biggest one that they said they're able to achieve 7,700 pounds max towing capacity, which is a huge upgrade from the previous generation Gladiator. And then also almost a ton, so almost a, a thousand, 2,000 pounds in the bed with a 1,725 pound payload capacity. Now I'm sure you have to have those equipped properly to do so, but that's a pretty big increase for the Gladiator. Now, obviously the Gibbons on the 2024 Gladiator, the front new grille, that was on all of them that I saw today. Also, the interior has been completely refreshed. So you got the 12.3 inch wireless Uconnect 5. You've got the adaptive driving controls, the adaptive safety control in there, everything from a Sport S and above. And then you've also got the side curtain airbags and the addition of the power seats. So those we were kind of anticipating on the interior of the Gladiator. If you're going to do it for the Wrangler, you may as well put it in the Gladiator as well. But there are some things that honestly we were anticipating a little bit more. Now Jim Morrison did mention three different top or hard top or actually vehicle top options and we went on through that and he didn't really go into it any further. So what I think he meant was the soft top, the hard top, and the paint to match hard top. If you guys recall a few months back, that might even be close to last year, we went over the Jeep Gladiator patents and there's a lot of really cool patents that were out there for a fully removable top, even a Sky One Touch on there. I'm not really sure why none of those were revealed for this. Honestly, I thought that the few months that they waited past the Wrangler, there would have been a just a little bit more on the top options there, but still your standard top options on there. The next thing that they kind of discussed on here were some of the wheel and tire packages. So you still get the 33 inch tires on the Rubicon. There are some brand new wheels, just like we saw on the Wrangler, on the 2024 Wrangler. However, we didn't hear anything about a 35 inch tire. So the Extreme Recon or just the 35 in general or the full floating rear axle. Now I imagine that with the higher tow capacity, we might see a full float, but there was absolutely no mention in the press conference. Hopefully we will see something coming up soon. The one thing that they talked about after the Rubicon is they revealed the Mojave. So obviously a lot of people love the Mojave trim. I personally really do as well. So with the addition of the upgraded interior, the upgraded exterior, the built-in windshield antenna, the front grille, not really too much has changed. I was hoping to see a full float, axle in the back of that, and maybe we will see that. Maybe that's gonna be something that's gonna be in the fine print on the window stickers when they're revealed, but there was nothing today actually at the reveal of the 24 Gladiator. One of the cool things that they did with some of the lower trims or some of the more price friendly trims is with the Willis trim, they added the rear locker option. So that's now factory on all Willis Gladiators. The one thing though that wasn't factory, it looked like it was still the standard fender flares and not the Highline Rubicon flares. So that's a little bit different with that compared to the 24 Wrangler that we were actually able to get the Highline fender flares and 33 inch tires on there. What they did reveal with the Willis trim was that they're now officially, it seems like they're super partnered up with AEV, which is a great thing. You can still get those upfitter packages with the Gladiator trims now. So you can get them on the Wrangler. Those were released as the, I think it's like the Upfit, the Upcountry, 
and then the level two is what we went over on the Wrangler. You can get all those on the Gladiator models. So I think that's a great addition to it. And it really gives you a way to factory order that and get it with all the goodies that you want from AEV without having to go back and forth to just get shipped right to your dealership. We didn't get to see any of the base models. So I'm curious as to what the base sport interiors look like. If it's anything like Ryan's Jeep, it's gonna look absolutely beautiful and probably better than some of the higher trims. However, we did not get to see what some of the bases look like. That's pretty, uh, I would say normal for a press reveal like this is to not show kind of the base level, just to go with the higher trims to really wow people when they roll out. But overall, we got to see probably three of the hottest trims, the Rubicon, the Mojave, and then the Willis trim up there. Jim Morrison always does a great job, and he actually focused a lot on the Grand Cherokee. And I gotta be honest, there was one little commercial that he played with a guy trading in his original Grand Cherokee and looking at all the dents and scrapes and the memories that cause those versus the dents and the bumps and scrapes. It really hit home and it I think it even choked Jim up a little bit because I think that's what we all do with our Jeeps. I've traded in a bunch of mine and went it over and like, man, hopefully they don't ding me for that little scratch or that ding. And then you think about the day that it happened and the good memories that you had. So that was really cool to see. Now the hardest part of this video is gonna be talking about why, <laughs> why I personally think this might have been a huge disappointment for me. We have anticipated this launch for, I mean, forever now. It's came five to six months after the 2024 Wrangler, so they had a ton of time to work on this Jeep to really make it something special, and dare I say, increase Gladiator interest and increase Gladiator sales. I'm gonna be 100% transparent with you guys. The Gladiators, the 2023s, are severely discounted. I have seen Pretty optioned out automatic Rubicons now for the $44,000 to $45,000 range. They're almost ten dollars to $12,000 marked off. And that's not just a typo. You can find dealerships anywhere that have those prices. To me, that's a little bit scary because Jeep does not discount the Wranglers much. And if you're discounting a vehicle like that, it sits a little bit nerve wracking. And I got to think to myself, unless they didn't want them to go any further with the discount and make the brand new Gladiator just completely wash out the market, I'm not sure what they were thinking. I gotta be honest with you, every single person that I have talked to really wants to see the Hemi in the Gladiator. I don't care if it's a 392, I don't care if it's a 5.7, I really don't care what kind of Hemi it is, everyone wants to see it in there. And I saw a really interesting Facebook post the other day that someone made about the 5.7 and even a Hemi in any vehicle or even a V8, and they say it's this engineering feat. It's that extraordinary. It's really crazy. Then I think to myself, how many Ram 1500s are sitting on lots and Ram 2500s and chargers and everything else with V8s? And you don't spend a twenty dollars to $30,000 markup on those. They're just common. I know there's a lot that goes into the back end, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tell me how hard it is to actually put one in. I'm sure there is. I get it. I know there's a ton of regulations, but you got to put a V8 in one of these Gladiators. I got to be 100% transparent. That's what I was hoping for, and that's what I think the audience really was asking for. There was one quote in the beginning of this whole reveal that said, our community spoke and we listened. And then after watching the reveal, I thought to myself, that could not be further from the truth. And I'm being 100% transparent from you guys. Every single person on the YouTube live video, on the Gladiator forum, on Facebook is like, where are the 35s? Where's the 4xe? Where's the Hemi? Where's the basic upgrades that we've been asking for? Heck, I didn't even see any mention of a factory-worn winch in the front steel bumpers. I don't know what is going on with this Gladiator, but I'm really hoping that we're going to see something else because I think we've really been looking for a lot of changes on this Jeep. And I got to say, today's reveal with no new colors, no real crazy information, it was a letdown for me, guys, and I don't want to steal your thunder if you loved what's going on with it, because I do think the new screen, the new grill, all that is fantastic, the safety additions. I just think that for the amount of time that they spent in between the 24 Wrangler reveal and this one, it was a little bit of a letdown for us, and I know a lot of the commenters are probably going to say the same. The other thing that I did want to bring up is that I saw on the forums afterwards, they are still going to keep the same iterations like the 24 Wrangler did, where they're going to make it a little bit more simpler, such as the Rubicon and then the Rubicon X. So you're not going to be able to option out the Rubicon as high as you could. You can either get the Rubicon or the X and then add different features into each of those. I also saw a post 
where the Mojave also had a Mojave X, which makes sense because you could option leather and different things with the Mojave. Now, once again, let me reassure you that I am not trying to rain on your parade if you absolutely love this new Gladiator. I, as a Jeep enthusiast, am just a little bit of disappointment towards what they could have done for this vehicle. I think there could be a lot more to it. And heck, if you guys do want more power, our friends over at America's Most Wanted 4x4, they said to me more of their vehicles that come in are actually Gladiators compared to Wranglers because that's the perfect vehicle to add some heavy horsepower into it, even if it's just a 5.7 or a 6.4. Give those guys a shout because they're an awesome crew over there. We just had to give them a plug because we had so much fun playing with their Hemi Jeeps. So honestly though guys, if you are looking to pick one of these up, you gotta check out our dealership affiliate program. We're gonna get you connected right down with Dan Cummins down in Paris, Kentucky. They'll give you a fantastic deal on these as soon as the pricing is available. And I know that Lindsay already has a wait list of all the 24 Gladiator people that we're looking to order. And she's gonna be reaching out to you guys just as soon as they can place those to make sure you're gonna be number one on the list. On today's viewer rig of the video, we are checking out Elliot's 2015 JK Unlimited that he said he built up used and did about 95% of the work himself. Now I love a JK, especially in the Sarge green like this. Elliot also said he's been a fan since our CJ days. So obviously Elliot, thank you so much for following us along so far and uh, kind of where we're at now. So very nice looking JK here. Looks like it's on about a set of 35 KO2s. It's got a Mopar 10th anniversary front bumper. Some looks like the barricade um, extreme terrain. I, th I think they're the barricade fender flares on this. Nice set of aftermarket wheels, a really cool light bar up top, and then and perhaps my favorite thing is the full interior digital dash. I've seen a few of those. This one looks like the Corroborator brand, if I'm not mistaken, but I actually had another message from someone on Instagram and they were talking about doing that in our JL. He's also done a paracord steering wheel on here, which I assume he did himself and I like the look of this. Plus it's just neat to see a cool JK. He also said another thing he did for you other JK guys, he retrofitted the performance wiper blades onto his Jeep and they do work. So that's a pretty cool one. So thank you, Elliot, for submitting this. If you guys want to have a chance of being featured as our viewer rig of the video be sure to hit us up on instagram or send us an email so always stay tuned to dirt road cred we have the latest and greatest in news and we try and get it out as quickly as we can anything we hear from the community any little rumors that we hear we try and talk about with you guys so you're up to date with all the knowledge but let us know in the comments what you think of the 24 gladiator let us know what you think it needs to stay afloat because i think it needs a little bit more than what we saw today drop that comment below and we really love to chat with you guys down below on this video Till next time though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred, and I want you to get out there and earn yours.